0.5 to a 0.5 hypermetropic for distance that after both the eyes have been done, it makes no difference qualitatively in their distance vision. However, it makes their intermediate vision slightly better. So that's what we always do, that we do not target myopia. And we also do not use different post-op targets in both the eyes. The, the advice for this is that if you have a zero in one, probably you'll you know, read it 30 centimeters. And if you have you know, some other correction, you may have a bit of a range in the other eye, like you have in monovision. But that is a concept which you, don't, you want, I mean, a good correlation between the two eyes. And as we know, restore works bilateral. So we're not going to do this for the two eyes. And that's the way we have seen that it's best to target them equally in both the eyes. Bilateral surgeries, this is one of the most crucial aspects of this lens. If you have a patient and not bring the other eye, he is not going to be happy. So bilateral is something which in my, my first couple of patients, I was doing them after one or two months. And they used to come back with complaints after the other. We have now been doing most of the cases within a period of one week in the two eyes. Uh, Richard Packer from uh, the UK, he does both the eyes in the same sitting. Now that's not a very good idea because you, if you are surprised with one aspect of your surgical procedure, you may end up with some refractive error and you don't want that to happen in both the eyes. So uh, neuroadaptation really works with this implant. Some special situations, myopes, I have been a bit careful with the myopes. Now they are not extremely happy as I mentioned earlier, but uh, the lenses, if the people are wearing contact lenses and uh, you know if they are using reading glasses, there's a different subset of people who use monovision. So you have to really sort of look at the, you know, weigh the pros and cons before you take up the myops. And I'm sure after you do 50 to 100 cases, you realize what you're, what you're doing to your patients. During surgery, rexis is an extremely important issue. The question here is round centered rexis and the optic equally well covered by the rexis edge is very important. Otherwise, what may happen is there will be anterior shift of the lens after surgery in the post-op period. So you may, you may get a patient who is perfectly corrected after surgery you know, on probably the first week or probably the first month, and he comes back to you after nine months with a minus one. Why? Because the lens is shifted up. Because the shift of the lens is going to create some more myopia. A one word about decentration. Now, the rings of the restore are placed normally in bang on the center. Unfortunately, these rings you can center in the rexis, as you saw in the previous, lens, uh, the previous slide there. Once you have the thing like that, what you do is, you realize that some of the pupils will come and sort of become small nasally to the optical center. So a very neat little trick which we have been doing for the last uh, few months is to realize and understand and appreciate the fact that the pupil center will be nasal to the optical center if the lens is centered in the rexis or in the bag. So what we do is we place the lens at a 6 to 12 orientation and after the viscoelastic has been removed from the back tap it back and move it slightly nasally. So what you're going to get is the lens is going to sit just bang on to the edge of the, to the center of the pupil. Now this should work in most of the cases. I mean, you have to have your pre-op you know, impression sort of noted in the uh, pre-op chart so that you are aware which person to do more, which person not to do. So, you know, these are things which, you know, like is a very, very sort of individualistic you have to kind of look into. Night vision, halos do occur, rings do occur, and these are things which we need to I would say appreciate and admit it does happen, but most people it disappears. I've had three people who are still cribbing about rings out of my more than 300 cases we have done. They're cribbing about the rings. It does happen. Intermediate vision problem is an issue after unilateral restore. Most of the cases after bilateral restores, they have become much better. And we have to be very careful about architects who are, you know, wanting to see the maps and the stuff on the big table or painters who operate, you know, with their long brushes or people who are laptop or, uh, you know, like who sort of work on screens, filmmakers. So we need to be careful about these people and counsel them very well, probably make them a bit more hypermetropic. And I have been trying to make them 0.75 hypermetropic in both the eyes, which will get the slightly better range of interview vision. It's a compromise, but it works. <laughs> Mismatched IOLs, I just don't believe in this concept at all. I'm sure none of you in this room will ever be willing to get one lens of one type and the other lens of the other type in any of your eyes. I'm pretty sure about that. People have tried it and pe some people are still continuing with it. Some people have reversed back into using just one. So whichever lens one believes in, I think you should be doing only one particular technology in both the eyes. And what we have found as issues with this lens 
over our last 15, 16 months. Rings around objects, halos, night vision, driving is an issue, intermediate vision difficulty like these which I mentioned earlier and near vision problems and dim light. These are issues which people have complained about. Different percentages are there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not here to sort of present my data, but we have had very few people who have been extremely unhappy with this lens. So mostly they diminish with time. Uh, more choices in the future. I mean, we thought we had it all, but Alcon is a very clever company. They just released a aspheric restore. There are certain issues with you know the uh, sort of uh, clarity of vision in the daytime and at night time. The contrast is a bit of an issue, which I'm sure, theoretically at least, unless we have used practically, we'll never know. But theoretically, it should sort of improve the quality of vision in these people. And what's expected in the future, probably by next year, or what I've been uh, sort of made to understand, are a 5.5 to a 9.5 line extension, low powers of the restores, and an aspheric toric IOL. Now, two slides to tell you that unlike the IQ, where the asphericity is in the posterior surface, in the aspheric restore, it's in the anterior surface next to the rings. Whereas, if you look at the aspheric toric IOL, the restore, now the anterior has got the apodized aspheric diffractive optic, while the toric is in the posterior surface. That's what the lens is going to be looking like. So, why we have been pretty happy with this lens is we are still continuing at nearly 20% of our cases with this lenses. Selection of the patients have been very judicious. We are learning to get better in that. Very careful counselling, meticulous patient workup, accurate biometry, uh, high-skilled reproducible cataract surgeries, bilateral surgery at quick intervals and follow-up visits frequently. That 50-year-old man from London was unhappy because there was no follow-up. We were not there to listen to his complaints. So the biggest factor is you have to have a listening ear, which you know, don't, don't, we don't believe in much. So in conclusion, we are moving forwards towards more of lens-based technologies to, for refractive solutions, vis-a-vis -vis only the cornea-based. So there has to be an amalgamation of the two. There has to be a combination of the two. So we better need to understand this. And these have been done. One very interesting thing which is being done is to reduce the near add from 3.2 into 2.5. And this should be also available in the near future. I don't know when. But what this will do is for people who have intermediate vision requirements there, it should be a better option for them. So it's another choice being added to your armamentorium. So we have the choices of nearly everything. The reason why I have just mentioned these future models is also because of the fact, as I said, five years back, we thought we had it all. But we are now slowly realizing that you know, more and more choices are being made available to us. And it's going to be very difficult, if I had not done all this, to actually implant an aspheric toric restore to a patient unless I understand the technology very well. And that's not the end. I mean, the ultimate I will, I never, I believe, will never be produced. But we are looking more at customized solutions being made. And that's what this choice is all about. Thank you very much. Uh, see, the message has been received, I think, exceptionally well because of the fact there, there was a bit of a misapprehension, uh, you know, a misapprehension about the fact that since we come from India, that probably the technology is not being done at that level, which people sort of think it is. But I can tell you the kind of stuff which is being done back in our country has been tremendous. And what I'm here to talk about, I, I, you know, these five lectures were so amazing because I realized that there were a lot of things which people didn't know about and you know, what we've experienced on our own. I think the message has gone off extremely well and what uh, I have realized the way the people took the message was brilliant and you know the, it was not really sort of known that such a lot of work was being done on the restore. So I think it's been a remarkable experience this, uh, these, uh, you know, these five lectures and all the cities we have visited have been absolutely wonderful and uh, people have been very very good and they've been extremely overwhelming. The next big development, as far as I feel, is uh, you know the move towards going into refractive cataract surgery, and where we are going to be customizing each and every aspect of the procedure. The lenses are just the beginning. I think the restore has been a very, very good beginning. If marrying the aesthetic to the restore has been another another option, which now will be available. 
the Torosity edition will be really good. But the thing is that it's an evolving thing and we will get better and better at this. The ultimate lens will never ever be produced. But what we have today, believe me, we are so much better than what we were about a year, even two years back. It has been absolutely incredible with the patient satisfaction and what we are being able to deliver from the refractive cataract surgery side. And it's a technology which is emerging so fast, we need to keep pace with each and every aspect of the procedure and of, of all the you know like lenses and the choices available. So I think overall the way things are going, we are trying to achieve the perfect IOL. Let's see when it comes.